Northern light season has begun and you might be traveling up north to witness this amazing natural phenomenon. And if you're photographing the northern lights, you want to make sure that you don't mess up this unique chance to capture some incredible images. I photographed the northern lights myself many times in many different situations and even guided people to set up their camera on northern lights tours. So in this video, I want to share with you seven common mistakes that people make when photographing the northern lights. And these are mistakes that total beginners make and even more experienced photographers. So hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to capture beautiful images of the Aurora on your next journey up north. Mistake number one is not knowing your camera well enough. You should be able to change some basic settings such as shutter speed or ISO. And especially if you are a beginner, get out of auto mode, go into manual mode, figure out where all the dials are and what they do. The Northern Lights can change in brightness and intensity. They can be more or less static or move very fast. And you wanna be capable of changing your settings according to all of these situations without having to fiddle around with your camera too much because then you might miss the shot. Your aperture is going to be the one setting that you won't need to change throughout the night. It's best to have it at the widest your lens can go. So for example, f1.8 or f2.8. But you are going to be adjusting your shutter speed and ISO. So just make sure you're comfortable changing these settings. And I'll talk more about shutter speed later in the video. Make sure you know how to manually focus on infinity because you are photographing the night sky and you want those stars to be crisp and sharp. You could practice manually focusing on infinity when it's daytime or even practice in your backyard focusing on a bright star because that's usually how you would focus on infinity when it's dark. Remember, when you are photographing the northern lights, it's going to be dark and that does complicate using your camera a little bit. So it's better to be prepared. Mistake number two is bringing the wrong gear for the job. I would suggest bringing a wide angle lens with a wide aperture because you're gonna wanna capture a lot of the sky but also include the landscape. And the wide angle lens is going to allow you to fit as much of everything into your frame. So anything from a 14 millimeter to 24 millimeter on full frame should do the trick. And by wide aperture, I mean the f-stop of your lens. The lower the number of the f-stop, the wider the aperture. And the wider the aperture, the more light can reach the sensor of your camera. And that's great when you're doing night photography and dealing with very low light situations. So for example, an f1.4, f1.8, or anything up to an f2.8 should work great. Of course, bring a tripod. If you're familiar with night photography, this might seem very obvious, but you are doing long exposures, so you want your camera to be stable and you don't wanna be balancing it on a rock or something like that. It's good to bring a remote shutter release or intervalometer, and especially if your camera doesn't have a shutter delay function. This is again to remove any kind of movement or vibrations when taking a photo. Make sure you bring at least one extra battery depending on the quality of your batteries. You're gonna be taking a lot of photos and it's going to be cold, so your batteries probably won't last as long as they normally do. And the last thing you want is to be running out of power just as the Aurora reaches its high point. And a bonus tip here, keep your extra batteries somewhere warm, like the inside pocket of your jacket. It'll help save their juice when it's cold. Shutter speed is the most important setting when photographing the Northern Lights. As I've mentioned before, the Northern Lights can move across the sky very fast, but they can also be more or less static. They can be quite faint, but also be very bright. So when you're photographing the Northern Lights, you wanna be thinking about the speed at which the Aurora is moving and the brightness of the Aurora, because those two factors are going to determine your shutter speed. And here's a shutter speed guide that you can use as a reference. For a faint Aurora, your shutter speed will be anywhere from 15 to 20 seconds. For stronger lights that are clearly visible with the naked eye, use a shutter speed between three to 10 seconds. When the Aurora is very strong or moving rapidly, a fast shutter speed of half a second to three seconds should be fine. Of course, you'll be adjusting your ISO accordingly so that you're not over or underexposing. Another bonus tip here, when you are changing your settings, always have a look at the results after taking a first shot. Check the histogram on your back screen and adjust your settings if needed. The last mistake on this list regarding settings is one that is very often overlooked because you might be thinking, well, I'm doing a long exposure with high ISO. Of course, I want to reduce the noise. Nope. When doing long exposures, the camera sensor can get warm and hot pixels can appear in the image. 
And this camera feature is there to remove those hot pixels from the final image. So basically what happens with long exposure noise reduction is that the camera will take an extra dark exposure with the shutter closed. And whatever noise the camera then finds in that dark exposure is going to be deleted from your original long exposure. The problem is that this extra dark exposure doubles your exposure time. And because you're already doing long exposures, you really wanna avoid this to waste any time. And Aurora photos are typically made in cold weather anyway, so the sensor heating up is not really a problem. So make sure you turn off long exposure noise reduction when photographing the Auroras. It can be quite overwhelming when you're witnessing a crazy Aurora show in the night sky. And you might be running around like a headless chicken trying to point your camera in every possible direction. And I've been guilty of that myself many times as well and ended up with mediocre shots of very awesome auroras. So it's important to keep composition in mind because you can photograph the biggest, coolest northern lights, but without context, you might not have a very interesting photo. Don't just think about shooting the lights, but shoot the lights with the landscape. Think about it as landscape photography, but with northern lights. When you're at a location, look for interesting things that you could use in your composition. Look for foreground subjects or leading lines to support the night sky. And this can sometimes be a little bit difficult because the weather might force you to go to less photogenic places. So maybe you have to get extra creative with what you've got. And it could be as simple as a fence pole, some trees, or even an empty road. Also try different orientations, landscape and portrait. For some shots, a portrait orientation will work better than landscape or vice versa. The next point is actually the opposite of what I just said and it's that you should just shoot the lights. Let me explain. When the northern lights are quite strong and they are visible right above you, make sure you also grab a few shots pointing your camera straight up. This way you're able to capture some really interesting aurora shots and also something what's called an aurora corona. It looks like the aurora explodes into this mind-boggling vortex. The northern lights are a natural phenomenon and like everything in nature it's very difficult to perfectly predict them. Now of course there's a lot of apps and websites out there that provide a lot of information about the aurora and about the weather. But in the end, it all comes down to being lucky enough that all the conditions perfectly align. That's why it's so important to take enough time. When you're traveling somewhere to see the Northern Lights, make sure you allow yourself at least more than one night to go out and chase the lights. And when you're out, don't give up too soon. Sometimes you have to wait a very long time before anything happens in the sky, or a cloudy sky might suddenly open up and reveal some beautiful Northern Lights. I hope that these tips will help you to make better photographs of the Northern Lights and that you're able to capture some incredible images. But my most important advice is actually to make sure that you enjoy it. The Aurora Borealis is one of the most, if not the most, awe-inspiring natural wonders. And if you are witnessing a beautiful display of Northern Lights, just enjoy it and appreciate it. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you're going to see the Northern Lights anytime soon, I wish you good luck and green skies. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.